Hey guys, what is going on? It is me, Box 12 here, and welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God ranking video. Last time I took the 14 classes and placed them in order from least to greatest, according to my own opinion, of course. And now today I'm following that up by looking at all of the Lost Halls items, and we'll be placing those items from least to greatest. Now, since I haven't been able to acquire any of these items for personal testing, I won't necessarily be ranking these based on how good or effective they are. General usefulness will, of course, be a factor like with any item, but you can think of this video as more of a wish list of sorts. Whatever the reason, we've got 26 of these to go through, so I'll try to make this fairly quick. I'll show the item, say what it is, what it does, and briefly explain why I want it. Coming out at number 26, we've got the Rusty Cuffs accessory item for the ST Trickster set. A pretty decent item overall, 70 health, 5 defense, and 5 speed. It's giving you more health than a Nile or an Expo, but more defense than a Pyramid Ring, and the speed is a nice bonus. There are a handful of rings that I would put on over this, of course, but whenever it comes to the ST accessory items, this actually isn't half bad. I think it's a fairly balanced mid to high tier defensive item. You've got health and defense to help take more hits, and the 5 speed to dodge more effectively. But if you're one of those guys that just likes to put on Deca rings, then yeah, you're probably not gonna not gonna want this. Number 25, we've got the Carved Golem Remains, the dagger portion of the SD set. It's kind of like the Sea Sword of daggers. It's giving you more range for the sake of less damage, and like the Sea Sword, I think it's just as useful. In those scenarios where you don't have enough range, this item will be better. Number 24, the Wand of Evocation. Yes, while the UT and ST items are all very fruitful, we also have the new tops to take into account. And because these items are all simply one step above their top counterpart, you really can't go wrong with any of them. I think it really boils down to what classes you play the most. I don't play wand classes too often. I've been playing priest a lot more because of the halls, and I do like sorcerer quite a bit, but I think it's safe to say that I play these staff and sword classes more. Number 23, the dagger of sinister deeds. Yet another top weapon that you can't go wrong with. And I know that all of the tier 13 weapons are going for this gold aesthetic, but I think it does suit the dagger pretty well. Number 22, brain of the golem. I gotta hand it to the community and devs for being able to create this many unique prisms. We've got one that drops bombs, one that duplicates, one that explodes, and now one that drops a stationary golem that can daze enemies within the explosion radius. It's also got a longer duration and a pretty low mana cost. Number 21, Dominion Armor. Basically a red Acropolis armor. You can't go wrong with 25 solid defense. Number 20, the Magical Lodestone. The item that nobody liked and... Well, nobody likes it still. Except for me, I am that guy. Part of me wants to put the Lodestone a lot higher for some reason. I think I just like the way it looks now. The new sprite, I think, is way cooler. It's like this golden egg yolk with an S on it. I don't know why I find that cool, but it does give you some pretty well-rounded stats as well. Six attack and dexterity, which is the equivalent of a crown, and six defense and speed, which, like the Rusty Cuffs, are two very nice defensive stats. Biggest drawback from this item, of course, is that it doesn't give you any health or mana, especially whenever we're constantly being healed. Why would you not want more health? I get it, but if I got this as my first white bag from the halls, I wouldn't be disappointed. I would actually be pretty happy. Number 19, Staff of the Vital Unity. Again, like before, tier 13 staff, better than tier 12, looks cool, and considering there really aren't any UT staves that I like to use as a main swap out, I find that I would get a lot more use out of this tier 13 weapon than I would out of some of the other ones. Number 18, to complement the staff, is the Robe of the Star Mother. Really like the gold pattern on this one. I think it suits the robe nicely. I think Soulless Robe might still be the robe of choice for a lot of other people, but as a guy who uses G-Sork as his main robe most of the time, I would not mind getting my hands on this. Number 17, Source Stone. The cool thing about this item is how it's sort of a counterpart to the Magical Lodestone, the other mystical gem accessory item of the Lost Halls. Both of these items ironically borrow elements from the Three Shatters rings. Lodestone gives you attack and dex, which is from the crown, as well as speed and defense, which is from the gemstone. Source Stone gives you 110 health and mana, taken from the crown and gemstone respectively, as well as six speed, which is also from the gemstone. However, because this item does give you health and mana, I find it to be a lot more applicable of an item than the lodestone. Plus, they gave it a really cool gem looking sprite, so I think it looks way cooler than it did before. Number 16, Quiver of the Shadows. Crazy powerful UT ability for the archer. Stand at point blank and you can unleash like four Doombo shots at once. Gives you plus two defense. It's a crazy good item. However, you do have to get pretty close to the enemy if you want to land all of your shots and get all of that sweet armor-piercing damage in. And it doesn't have any status effect of any kind, which makes sense, considering if it had a status effect in addition to this crazy damage, it would probably be a little bit too unbalanced. That being said, that does take away one of my favorite aspects of the archer, which is being able to inflict all of these status effects at long range. I love paralyzing enemies and then hitting them with the Doombo. To take that away from the archer is kind of to take away what I love about it most, and that is what ultimately holds this item back for me. 
Number 15, Wyvern Skin Armor. Aside from being a better Hydra, I really think that they nailed the aesthetic of it. I love the dark green color choice. It just looks very earthy and gritty, and I love that. Number 14, Golem Garments. It's kind of like the Spectral Armor, which sacrifices defense for attack. Only unlike that armor, we're getting eight attack instead of three. Now we do have to take into account the dexterity that we're losing from say a Hydra, so the eight attack isn't as big of a DPS increase as we would like it to be, but it's still pretty good. Number 13, Bow of the Void. Not gonna lie, I've been rearranging this list as I've recorded it. Just can't seem to make up my mind. But Bow of the Void was actually a lot lower before and now it's quite high. I took one look at the DPS calculator and realized, oh hey, that's actually pretty good. It does a significant amount more damage than the Doom Bow on low to mid to even pretty high defense targets. The item will of course only do more damage if you can hit all of your shots, but considering the paralysis combo exists with the archer, I think I can make that happen. Number 12, Sword of the Colossus. White and gold is such a divine combination of colors already, but in pixel art it really manages to shine. The blade looks like it was formed from this white holy stone, and the hilt is golden with magic. It also just so happens to be extremely powerful. Yeah, the amplitude is extremely funky, that's sort of the quirk of the item, but that's a challenge I'm willing to take when the time comes. Number 11. Bloodshed Ring. I may be a little biased towards this UT Necro set, but the Bloodshed Ring I feel has a unique twist to it. You're getting 100 health and 5 defense, which is already a little bit better than a Pyramid Ring, plus 5 wisdom, which is sort of an odd combination. I can't think of that many rings off the top of my head that combine health and defense with wisdom. It's usually a ring with a lot of other stats to be multi-purpose. And I think for a class like the Necro, which this set is designed for, is pretty good. Not the best in the game, but I like it. It's different. Number 10. Breastplate of New Life. The whole Paladin set has this wonderful black and blue color combination, or I'm sorry, white and gold, but it also does a very unique but pretty logical concept of taking away defense and giving you health. It's like a reverse candy coated, which in some ways allows you to essentially wear two Decker rings at once. And trying to get as much health as you can on these guys is always a fun challenge. Number nine, Staff of Unholy Sacrifice. What can I say? It's a staff with four shots and it shoots backwards. That has to be one of the most ridiculous twists I've ever seen in realm, and I love it. Is this item going to be a nightmare to use? Possibly, but I'll take that chance because it also sounds like a lot of fun, and the fact that it can pierce their enemies only sweetens the deal. It's also a great addition to the set as a whole, because the cultist set is all about making the necromancer really powerful, and an item like this definitely does that. Number eight, Bow of Mystical Energy. Honestly, probably not even gonna use this item very much if I get it. Doombow and Coral Bow have been my swap out combo for years, but if I ever happen to not have those items, I would gladly use this new top bow. It looks really nice. Number seven, Armor of Nil. We wanna know why this item is so high here? Ninja. Number six, Marble Seal. I'm very torn on this item because on one hand, it's really awesome how you can summon this tower, which admittedly doesn't look as cool as it used to, but you give armor and damaging to everybody within four tiles of the tower for four and a half seconds. It gives you five defense, but naturally, like any UT, this is not your new main seal. You will still want to have a G cookie on you at all times, as it does cost a lot of mana, it has a cooldown, and it really limits your mobility when cast, but it gets style points. Number five. Ritual Robe. The lower MP and defense amounts are a little off-putting at first, admittedly. Although the 5 attack is pretty nice, it's the 15 Wisdom that makes this robe shine. Classes that are affected by Wismod will thrive while wearing it, making the Necromancer's skull even more powerful. Number 4. Sword of Splendor. Aside from being a super powerful high tier sword, this thing just looks incredible. Gold hilt, red ruby, silver blade. This is a great looking sword that can pull its own weight. Number 3. Omnipotence Ring. You knew it had to be coming at some point, but where? Where would it be? This was originally my favorite item from the whole Lost Halls, but then I had to stop and think, how many classes would I realistically put this item on? It gives you health and mana and four of every stat. There's not a single class that this item isn't good on. But at the same time, whenever you achieve perfect balance, it also doesn't have a single area where it really shines. And that can be a little off-putting for some people, but it's still really good. It's objectively better than Nile and Expo, but everywhere else, you could debate it. Still really good though, still really good. Number two. Skull of Corrupted Souls. I said it way back when, but I am still in love with this ability. Not because it's super great or anything, it's pretty fine actually, it's, it's good. It is a weaker skull than most of the other ones, with a smaller radius, but it does have a slightly lower mana cost, and curses enemies, which by the way goes into effect before the skull's damage happens. So you're actually doing more damage than meets the eye. Plus, the cursing ability will inherently give the necromancer more DPS. And of course, that sprite so cool. It has the golden red from the Sword of Splendor that I love so much, plus the fact that 
It's a freaking skull. Number one, my most anticipated item from the Lost Halls that will be extremely underwhelming to all of you. Sadamune, the tier 13 katana. Being as how the ninja is sort of my guy, it should come as no surprise that I would want to get my hands on the new top katana. Not only is it going to, of course, do more damage, but that sprite looks really good. And I know if I get it, I'll be one of the only people actually using it, because not only does nobody play ninja, they're all using dokus. And, well, I obviously will never get one, so... That's nice. But in any case, those are all of the Lost Halls items personally ranked from least to greatest in order of how badly I want them. But thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. Alright. See ya.